Hi everybody, it's Dr Biology here and this one is about A-level biology and it's about exam techniques. So I'm going to go through um, my own kind of uh, thoughts about exam technique, go through command words, how to approach questions, giving you some examples in there as well and then some actual uh, preparation for your exams as well. So hopefully you will find it useful. So firstly, before I go on, obviously there are different ways of approaching different types of question. Um, but uh, I think this particular method is quite useful for A-level and this is what I'm going to talk about now. So here's a, a normal question, talks about mammals such as a mouse and a horse are able to maintain a constant body temperature. And it says use your knowledge of surface area to volume ratio to explain the higher metabolic rate of a mouse compared to a horse. OK, well, first of all, um, I would say we need to do a spec check. So first of all, the spec, we need to identify the part of the spec that is relevant to the question. So looking at this about maintaining a constant body temperature, maybe, but this is a paper one. This is a paper one um, exam question, so it's more likely to do with the surface area to volume ratio, which will be related to gas exchange and to adaptations of the mouse and the horse. So the next thing we need to look at is, if I get out of the way, is the command words. So there's many command words, and I'm going to talk about lots of the different types of command words you can come across but what form you must write your answer in. So in this case, it's use your knowledge. So this is going to be straightforward recall of um, the surface areas, volume ratio differences between a mouse and a horse. But what's the direction of the um, question? Well, this tells you specifically what information to include in your answer. So you've got to talk about surface area to volume ratio, but you've got to explain the higher metabolic rate of a mouse compared to a horse. OK, so um, you can't just talk about surface area to volume ratio. You've got to then explain, well, why does that mean that the um, there is a higher metabolic rate in the mouse compared to a horse? So let's have a look at this answer. So remember, it's spec command direction. So um, looking at the spec, it's the surface area to volume ratios. The command is use your knowledge and the direction is about the higher metabolic rate of a mouse compared to a horse. So here's uh, the mouse. You could talk about the horse. Uh, it would allow converse things. But for example, the mouse has a larger surface area to volume ratio. Therefore, there's more heat loss and then that will explain why there's a higher metabolic rate because it then needs to have a faster rate of respiration to re the, or metabolism that releases the heat. So there you go. So that kind of idea there about looking at each exam question and working out which is the spec, the command and the direction. And I'm going to be going on that theme quite a lot in this video. Types of command word questions. Well, there are many different types of command words and for AQA, as in every other exam board, if you type in command words for the exam board in A-level biology, they'll give you a long list. Um, I'm going to concentrate, though, on some categories of command words to make it a bit easier. Uh, so the first one is about statements. So they're things like state, so command words that state, define, name, give, which then explains or qualitative um, kind of command words. So there's there's both simple explanations and more complex explanations. But it's using words like describe, explain, suggest. So suggest is usually there are lots of different answers from looking at the data. Give reasons and outline. Calculate. So remember, 10% of your exam is calculations. So calculate is, is using the numbers to produce a solution. Show your working or determine. 
data analysis. So again, describe and explain are very important in this, but it's about using that data. You're summarizing the data or analyzing or deducing something from the, the, the data that they have given you. Extended answers. So these are for larger mark questions, three, four, five marks, and also, um, if you think about it, also the essay in paper three. So uh, many of these are related to evaluate or discuss, compare or contrast information, devise or design. Now, devise doesn't really come up in AQA as, as such. I think it does in some of the other specs in A-level biology. So let's go through them. So first of all, statement. So what do I mean by a statement? Well, this tests your ability to remember facts. So it's recall. Um, questions are direct from the spec. So the specification that you, again, you, you should all know about um, in terms of what the main keywords are, what the main kind of um, key processes are, but short questions, usually one or two marks. You may need to use information to extract the answer as well. Uh, so let's have a look at this example. So what is meant by a gene? So therefore you would, uh, through recall, you would know for two marks that it's a length of DNA, one mark, that codes for a single protein, two marks. So those are kind of stock answer statement questions. They don't make up large proportions of your exam in A-level biology, but you've got to know all the key terms and definitions um, anyway. Right, explains qualitative. So um, let's talk about simple explanations. So this tests your qualitative understanding of biological processes. So you may need to recall simple facts and then link it to your knowledge to specific examples within a question. So usually it's process as well. So you might go through a certain key process of giving a simple explanation, but sometimes they do link it with data in the question. So let's have a look at uh, an example. So farmers are now being encouraged to replant hedges on their land, suggest and explain one advantage and one disadvantage to a farmer of replanting hedges on her farmland. And that's just two marks. So again, let's do a spec check. Well, this is about uh, biodiversity, about hedgerows, about the effects of intensive farming, possibly, how to rewild areas, replant hedges. The command words are suggest and explain. And particularly, it does put in bold one advantage and one disadvantage. So do not go off on the tangent producing lots and lots of examples because they only need one of each. And then the direction, well, it's the advantage or disadvantage to a farmer of replanting hedges. Okay, so that's important to remember. It's about the um, to the farmer. So uh, key answering these types of questions. Don't repeat the content from the question in your answer. So um, I've seen it in many students where they would uh, start the question by saying um, far, farm the uh, advantage to a farmer of replanting hedges on on her farmland are and then they answer the question. Well, that's not really gonna help you because you just repeating the question and you just probably wasted about 30 seconds writing out the question. So please don't do that in an exam. So let's have a look at the answers. So there's many advances, answers. When you have suggest in there, usually there are lots of different answers. So um, I won't read through all of them, but you can see there's lots and lots of answers you could have. So one advantage and one disadvantage related to the farmer of replanting hedges. So there we go. Good. So let's move on to a more complex explanation. So this tests your ability to describe more complex processes and hypothesize based on provided information. So it's information given to you in the question, longer explanations, usually with multiple linked points. And usually you need to write what will happen in a process in the context of an example given. It's got to be clear. It's got to be concise. It's got to be logical. So 
here we go. So this is a five mark question. Um, let's just, just do our spec check first. So spec undergoing DNA replication. So the question is about DNA replication. The command word is just describe, which is great, but it's related to BRDU. And it says um, determine the percentage of heart cells undergoing DNA replication by using a chemical called BRDU. I will tell you this is part of an, uh, a longer question. It's not just one separate question, by the way. Um, and direction. So how BRDU would be incorporated into new DNA during semi-conservative replication. So I've already said the spec is DNA replication, which is semi-conservative replication. Um, and then you could put your answers together. So again, that DNA helicase breaks hydrogen bonds. But this is where you need to include the information in terms of BRDU. So you need to say that uh, it's not just uracil, it's BRDU is complementary to adenine. So do you see what I mean? There's a subtle difference here. You can't just say everything you know about DNA uh, semi-conservative replication. You've got to use the information they've given you, the direction that they've given you in the question. OK, and so you need to talk about BRDU within your answer. So on to calculate. So calculate, show you're working, determine things. So this does test your quantitative understanding. Um, sometimes you might need to recall formula, formulae. Uh, you might have to uh, reorganize formulae as well. Um, but usually they give you lots of information in the question. You never have to calculate statistics, not even standard deviation. You just need to interpret that data, which is good. Um, and you need to interpret data, figures, graphs to obtain values for a calculation. And it's definitely important, even if you struggle with these types of questions, show your workings as you can sometimes gain marks just from um, even if the answer is incorrect. OK, so if you get part of it, you can get half marks, which is better than no marks. Um, be prepared to change units, use significant figures, standard form. And if you're really stuck, you can check out my math skills in biology playlist. So there is a link to it. I'll put the link in this video as well in the discussion box. Right, so let's have a look at some questions here. So usually they go, well, always they're going to give you unfamiliar data. So um, this one shows the percentage of rat cells undergoing DNA replication. Um, and you can see percentage of cells undergoing DNA replication on the Y axis. On the X axis is time in hours. So it's important to read that. And it says um, some cells contained a protein called cyclin D and some cells did not contain cyclin D. All cells were in early interphase at time zero. So with cyclo uh, cyclin D, I can immediately see, well, um, there's a higher percentage of uh, cells are, well, it's a faster rate of undergoing DNA replication, faster than without cycling. But without cycling, there is a, um, a large, the largest percentage is found um, in that particular treatment. Um, it decreases quicker, though, also with cycling D. Anyway, so there's lots of information there. So it says it took less time for 25% of the cells with cycling D to be undergoing DNA replication than, than for 25% of cells without cycling D. So let's find 25%. So 25% is there. It says use figure five to calculate this time difference as a percentage decrease. So I know I can work out percentage change. So it's the start minus the finish divided by the start times 100. If you don't know how to do percentage change, you really do need to know. That's one of the most basic kind of well used uh, calculations. So let's have a look at the time. So if you look there, um, that is 11.5 related to the uh, scale. So it goes up two small, two small squares. So it's, that is 11.5. And that is uh, 16, 17.5. So the answer would be this. So if you've got the difference, so I've said six hours, 
then um, I know that the difference is uh, you can then work it out and you can have two significant figures or three significant figures and they give it within a particular range and that is quite common um, so it's, it's important that you know that even if you slightly get the measurements wrong that you can um, still get the mark if you it says um, if the range is too high or it's rounded to more than three significant figures you only get one out of two marks so be careful there so I, I would have gone with two significant figures um, I don't know three yeah three significant figures actually um, so be careful with that right this question here is uh, quite involved and also uh, one thing you will need to know is how to use logs so log 10 um, and I've done a video again on uh, using log 10 so again lots of information here um, and they uh, talk about in this case antibiotics on mice with a bladder infection divided them into three groups you got control treated with an antibiotic used for a bladder infection and the other was treated with a new antibiotic so I can immediately see um, the log 10 number of bacteria in A is much less than it is in R, so it seems to be quite effective. I can tell that. So the question, you can see the antibiotics were given to the mice at a dose of 25 milligrams per kilogram per day. And then it says calculate how much antibiotic would be given to a 30 gram mouse each day. Show you're working. So sometimes you're going to have to... Um, change the units so um, here 30 grams of mouse each day so um, you notice it's in per kilogram so you've got to work out well how much is 30 grams in a kilogram so it's 0 0.03 or you could convert the milli milligrams down into 0 0.025 milligrams per gram so either way and then once you've got that you can then work out 0 0.03 and then um, how much it goes into 25, so it's 0 0.75. Ca then the next one, calculate the percentage difference in actual number of bacteria in group A compared with R, and then the actual number to be calculated from the log 10 value by using the 10x function on your calculator. And again, um, I'd ask you to look at my YouTube video on log functions, and the answer, you would find is there for two marks is 97 to 97.8%. So you're using the graph to help you work out the log 10 number. Okay, so um, so group A, for example, you would work it out and then group um, R and then what's the difference? Um, and it says calculate the percentage difference. So there we go. So on to data analysis. So describe, explain, summarize, analyze, and deduce. So this is where, un where you get unseen and unfamiliar contexts tested. So they might have experimental skills. They might show you lots of data on different things, uh, such as I've just shown you for the calculation. And then you've got to analyze and evaluate data and figures. And particularly, they want you to make comparisons or do comparisons or they want you to evaluate information. Um, they give you lots of data. Not all that data is required sometimes um, and it will be provided in, in the context of the question. Also, they tend to highlight things in bold. So if they highlight things in bold, then that means do it. OK, so, for example, here we've got a um, it says scientists uh, collected data on 800,000 human births. So you can see the mass of each ba baby at birth and whether the baby needed to be transferred for a very ill baby. So transferred to special care units. It says use figure five to explain how human mass at birth is affected by stabilizing selection. So bold items. So the bold item here is figure five. So they want you to use figure five to explain how mass at birth is affected by stabilizing selection. They want you to write what the data shows and give reasons for why it shows that. When describing, you need to use those relevant figures. Okay, you can even do some calculations if you wish. 
You need to give a well-developed uh, line of reasoning, which is clear and logical in structure. So let's look at this question related to uh, spec, command and direction. So spec in this case is definitely it's about stabilizing selection. So this was uh, your work uh, in genetic variation. Um, the command word, again, I'll get out of the way, is use figure five to explain. So you've got to give biological reasons for this data. Direction about explaining how human mass at birth is affected by stabilizing selection. Hmm. So there are three marks up for grabs. OK, so here we go. Oh, by the way, if you you could try and do these questions before I show you the answers. I should have told you that before, though. Um, OK, so here is the answer. And you can see there's a large proportion of marks here for just mentioning the data. So, for example, um, it says you're most likely to be transferred to a special care unit for those under 2,800 uh, grams. OK, so you can see that under 2,800, the transfer increases rapidly. So from the increase, OK, um, or they'll accept the converse of that. So um, that between 2,800 and 4,200, you're less likely to be transferred. Extreme mass of babies are less least likely to survive. That would be why um, well, why are they least likely to survive? So uh, how will that affect selection? Well, they're less likely to pass on those alleles. OK, so for extreme mass, uh, extreme mass at birth decreases in frequency. OK, so decreases in frequency. I'll move out of the way. That's the population frequency on the y axis or the alleles decrease in frequency. So you've got to talk about both. Well, all parts of the graph, really. OK, using some of the data, but also explaining how human mass at birth is affected. So um, extreme mass of babies, least likely to survive. Um, so whether they're un uh, small or large um, and therefore they don't pass on the alleles and therefore extreme mass at birth decreases in frequency. So that's why you get stabilizing selection. Right, here is another good question. OK, it's about bees this time. So it talks about different species of bees. You've got natural town and farmland, mean number of bees collected, mean bee species richness. So this is about the biodiversity of bees. So again, um, spec check. This is about bees or well, not just bees, about biodiversity and also species richness. But in this question, they're saying from the data in figure four, which is shown there, it says a student made the following conclusions. So the natural habitat habitat is most favorable for bees and two, the town is the least favorable. So do the data in figure four support these conclusions? Explain your answer. Four marks. So it's two marks for the first point for the natural habitat habitat is most favorable and two marks for the town is least favorable. So again, it's about looking and examining that data that they've given you in the question. So you can see the mean number of bees collected um, and it shows the day of the year. OK, and it shows then the species richness. So, yes, natural is best because the peak of bee numbers in the natural habitat is the highest. Um, you've got the number of bees was higher in the natural habitat until day 200. So using that data again, species richest in the natural habitat was high at all times, regardless of the day of the year. Um, so um, you only need one of those. OK, and because you're evaluating the data, what's a negative? Well, the lowest number of bees after day 220, approximately 220. So they'll accept anything between 210 and 230 because it's not very clear in the axes. Um, also, uh, peak of spe species richness is higher in both natural and farmland, as you can see. OK, so no, why is this town? Uh, so the town is the least favorable. Um, well, no, it's not because you can see species richness is lowest 
in farmland okay up to about day one two five there's some similar numbers of bees in farmland okay uh, so there's lots of different things you can talk about there i would probably uh, mention the days of the year as well in your answer so on to extended answers so evaluate discuss compare contrast and design so this is writing and structuring longer answers they've got to be coherent they've got to have structure to them coherence of arguments are important some form of reasoning may be required um, so here we've got a nice, this is quite a simple one describe the chemical reactions involved in the conversions of polymers to monomers and monomers to polymers okay give two named examples of polymers and their associated monomers to illustrate your answer so spec it's about polymers monomers and polymers uh, command words describe the chemical reactions of the conversion from polymer to monomer and monomer to polymer but then for the other two marks direction you've got to give the two named examples of polymers and their associated monomers to illustrate your answers so it's not just straightforward um, so the kind of answer they're looking for is to talk about condensation and hydrolysis reactions and then giving suitable examples as you can see in the answers there okay also you need to give a reference to a correct bond within a named polymer it can be any named polymer in in that respect okay so um there you go it's not about obviously triglycerides this one's a bit more complicated okay so uh, again in terms of let's do a spec check this is about muscle contraction but actually this part of the question is not really about muscle contraction so it's about using figure three to evaluate a conclusion so the a student looked at the results and concluded that a decrease in pH does cause a decrease in the force of muscle contraction now what's weird is here it says about um, it says figure three shows the results scientists obtained for B and D compared with the appropriate control so mouse and rabbit muscle fibers and they got the same pH okay but you've got to look at this part here the force of the muscle contraction per percent the um, the percentage of appropriate control so the control at 100 anything below 100 okay is going to be lower okay so lower force of muscle contraction so I would probably draw a line across there okay so um, again they want you to uh, evaluate so um, you can see for example there is a lower force of contraction in mouse uh, below 29 degrees C so you can see it's 29 degrees C there so below 29 degrees C whereas for um, the rabbit it's below 26 degrees C or 26.5 oops yes 26.5 um, you could say it's higher above 29 or higher above the rabbit okay um, basically you've got to decide which one you're going to talk about whether it's lower or higher um, evaluate it's only the um, it the student said it concluded that decrease in pH does cause a decrease in the force of muscle contraction when you're only looking at a rabbit or a mouse you've got no other organisms there um, body temperature as a mouse is going to be probably higher um, you only use one pH, uh, so 0.5. So in terms of evaluation, it, you could use more pH values, etc. You didn't, and a real, really a gift actually. When you're evaluating conclusions like this, where they got lots of data, but they haven't included a statistical test, there's no stats test to see if the differences are significant. Now that's one to remember to put in the bag of your your toolbox so to say so to speak right final exam tips never ignore directions when in bold use the data and analyze it you can write on the question paper the examiners will only see your answer it's really important to state they only get a strip of your answer digitally they show it shows nothing of the question so please use highlighters underline things write little little notes to yourself 
put down the data so you know what you're going to talk about. Don't forget your calculator. Paper one, I would start on the 15 marker, okay, which is at the end, the three five mark questions, okay, because that's quite a large proportion of the uh, exam. Paper three, I would look at the essay questions first. Some students do a actually answer the essay question and maybe the comprehension question as well, first of all, because those are the most marks. Sometimes just state the obvious. I tell this to my students all the time. You know, they miss easy marks because they don't state the obvious. Don't repeat the question in your answer, okay? Don't waste your time. Um, use the mark allocations. Don't write too much as well. So um, uh, these days they give you far, well, they give you large amounts of space because they don't want to give you any extra bits of paper to attach to your exam paper. OK, so uh, they give you far more space than is required. Um, make sure you answer the question. So remember spec, command, direction. So make sure it's related to the information they want in the answer. Um, lastly, actually. Lastly, actually, is one um, that's really important is try every question, even if you get stuck. OK, try every question. And sometimes you've got to move on past a question you can't do, but make sure you come back to it at the end and try and do it. Right. Lastly, why have I got a banana there? Well, um, I'm a great believer of uh, looking after yourself usually. Uh, so bananas, very good. Potassium and magnesium slowly digest. I do say to my students have a banana before a, an exam. Uh, but these are the these are key exam preparation tips that are really important. So eating breakfast is really important. So, um, for example, I like to run marathons every now and then, not all the time. Uh, but uh, I would say things like porridge oats are very good. Uh, so uh, they're slow release carbohydrates. Stay hydrated. Water is the best, of course. Uh, fibre does slow down digestion, so it causes energy to be released into the body more slowly. So that means uh, lots of different types of fruits. So if you don't like bananas, there's other options. Um, also, when you're going to bed as well, um, be careful not to eat too heavily uh, before you go to bed. Uh, have your last meal three hours before you go to bed. Avoid food and drinks that contain caffeine, tea, coffee, coke, uh, chocolate, for at least four hours before going to bed. I'm a great believer of this. Regular exercise is important. It maintains your blood flow, improves circulation, deals with your anxious thoughts. It keeps you in a positive state of mind. So, OK, that brings us to the end of this section of work. I hope you found it useful. There's quite a lot of uh, points in this video. It's quite a long video, so you might want to come back to it every now and then. Um, but uh, I hope it's been useful and good luck in your forthcoming exams.